Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Let me make sure this audio is good before we start cooking. Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Hope everybody's having a blessed day. In today's uh, live, in this live, man, I'm doing this to speak to men. And we're going to start this one off with just because you have the anatomy of a man doesn't mean that you have a masculine spirit. First and foremost, you know, you might have an effeminate spirit today. And the choice is yours whether or not you get deliverance out of that spirit. But we know that the effeminate will not inherit the kingdom. Man, I'm seeing a lot of brothers jump on the bandwagon of bearing false witness, talking boldly. You know, the original uh, charge of presumptuous, you got men showing their presumptuousness, not realizing, man, that a lot of what is the history of the Bible has a lot to do with war. The Most High Yah being a Yah of war, Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Him letting us know that there is a season for war, Ecclesiastes 3 letting us know that we are to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Man, I want to caution men out here. It's very easy to want a juicy story. It's very tempting for you to want to get your views up. Very tempting for you to want to gain a following. But all that has nothing to do with when you get your card pulled. Man, life has a way of humbling people. To the prideful, to the arrogant. Life humbles you when you realize you don't have wisdom. You don't have understanding, nor do you have competence. And that's meant to humble you. Man, on the thumbnail is a picture of two men having a conversation or a debate. And I want to remind people, you know, that the boastful, arrogant, and prideful man known as Geno Jennings. That man stood up in the pulpit and said, I will debate anybody. The problem is, for entertainment purposes, he loves making a mockery of those who are lost. When it comes to those, them that know the law, them that live Torah, them that have faith with works, man, he's not willing to debate. And, and mind you, we're talking about somebody of a rather large uh, internet following and physical following. It wasn't wrong for Shep Dow to say, hey, I take you up on that offer. Man, we see after this occurred, not only did Pastor Geno Jennings get sick, Shep Dow said, hey, we, 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 hey, I understand the debate is one thing, but we're praying for that brother. Life has a way of humbling you. Men, you need to hear me, hear me loud and clear. Man, there's some men out there right now that you have 
a sense of arrogance and prideful and you think you got skills and you ain't got no skills, man. You couldn't lead yourself out of a bowl of jello. Not saying that in the future you you can you can learn. But we got young men that don't want to be learned. Don't want their iron sharpened. Sitting up saying crazy stuff. Man, let me give you an example of both being tested. Man, there's a lady, a black lady by the name of Kendra G. Man, Kendra G, man, was bumping her gums, saying all kind of craziness, bumping them gums. This is, this is amongst the heathens. I'm going to give you an example. She was bumping her gums about Cardi B. Cardi B let her bump her gums and then tested that boast. Now Kendra G is in debt to doggone Cardi B for over a million dollars. And that's amongst the heathens. Amongst the heathens, man, they will test your boast. How much more in Israel do you not think that you can call out a man, put charges on a man, add your opinion, bear false witness, and a man not test your boast? Man, I heard somebody say, I heard it. Somebody say, man, you're a small fry. I got one YouTube. I got two YouTube channels, three YouTube channels, four YouTube channels. I said, what? When has YouTube become the standard of fruit? Man, there's a there's a there's a grave difference between having a large following on the internet versus being able to lead for real. There's a you you can't even think that you are in the same ballpark. Man, a lot of these young brothers operate like religious groupies. And you can be delivered out of that. You can, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to get your card pulled. Man, I want to shout out, because let me tell you something. What's happening is all these brothers adding their two cents. That's what they're doing. And further laying on charge, further trying to lay the charge, and let me get to this. Hold on, let me find it real quick. This, mm -mm -mm. I couldn't believe this, man. Let me find it. Hold on real quick. I want to give a shout out to a brother. I got to find this. Let me give this shout out. All right. Man, I want to give a shout out because some of these young brothers that claim to have the truth won't even defend the words that come out of their mouth. And I'm seeing it. The only fruit you got is YouTube. And at the end of the day, man, you might be bumping your gums, writing a doggone check that that effeminate spirit in you can't cash. Man, if you go back and look up Pastor Dow versus Ron Young, Shout out to Ron Young. That brother being a Christian, even being in disagreement, at least was willing to defend his honor, defend what he stood for. That debate was about Christmas and Easter. Even that brother, whether he was wrong or right, he defended 
what he stood for, what he believed to be the truth. A lot of you brothers, you will you will argue and debate about sports and nonsense. But when it comes to truth, man, you ain't got no fight in you. You ain't got no fight in you whatsoever. Here's another one. Pastor Dow versus Pastor Roberts. At least you have these men that are making statements and willing to defend them. And you got a lot of these people you click on and click off, but you ain't built like that. Not saying that you can't in due time be built like that. Man, I want to caution men. Man, I've had the I've had the the, the pleasure, all praise to the Most High Yah, uh, to spend a lot of time around grooming men, being groomed, being in leadership. And I'll tell you, man, that a lot of these men that do all this hooping and hollering and false witness and laying charge and talking tough, saying I'll doggone. Uh, I'll doggone debate anybody. Oftentimes, man, they, you see, they don't answer the call when their car get pulled. And then you, 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 you realize you probably shouldn't be wearing boxes with the dick holes. You probably should be wearing panties. Probably should be, you know, getting them tampons, plugging up that hole because your masculinity is leaking out when you get your car pulled. Man, there's nothing wrong with realizing that you got an effeminate spirit. First part is accountability. You got a soft spirit. Something soft in you as a man. But don't go around thinking you got it and nobody ain't going to pull your card in righteousness, testing what you call to be declaring the truth. Man, let me give you a common mistake. Man, a common mistake on the topic of biblical marriage and divorce. Man, people look at the teachings of Paul and they mistake that for law. They mistake that for law. And even in context, Paul is letting you know before he gets into what people run with, he's letting you know, man, I'm speaking to those that know the law. Let me find that. So when we get into Romans 7, the first, first part, before we get down to the example in verse two, he's letting you know, man, I'm not speaking to just anybody that's wanting to come up and hear and one with I'm speaking, brothers and sisters, for I'm speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone as long as that person lives. But people will Google passages about marriage and divorce and it'll come up with Romans chapter seven, verse two. For example, by law, a married man is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. Man, you got to look up what is in the New Testament is only two, almost 250 some years worth of history. And people disregard what is in the old you could you could even pull that divider out of your doggone Bible. That was because of the canonization of the of the, of the book by the Romans and the Greeks. All of these examples are meant to direct you back to the law, to give you edification, to give you understanding. And this is. This is the same reason why Geno Jennings didn't take the debate. 
because he realized, oh, snap. And he tried to save face rather than showing up and being uh, shown as not having understanding of even what Paul says. I speak to them that know the law. You think you know the law? If you ain't living it. Man, people people read. About Messiah fulfilling the law, he said he didn't come to destroy. People read that he came to fulfill the law, not having understanding that a man cannot adhere to all of the law. As a man, you only have to adhere to the part of the law that pertains to you. As a man, I don't have a menstrual cycle. So there's that part of the, the Torah doesn't apply to me. But when it comes to bodily fluids, that part of the law, because both men and women have bodily fluid, that part of the law pertains to you. But Paul is letting you know, I'm speaking to them that know the law. Oftentimes, the Pharisees, the ones that were laying charges on the taught ones, on Messiah, they were often, when they, when they got their card pulled, they were often exposed as lawless, had no idea what they were talking about. Messiah himself, even when he was, you have people that say, Jesus ain't never mentioned that. And they disregard everything else. Messiah was meeting people where they were. There was no need in him reciting the whole Ten Commandments if that's not your area that you were deficient in. Messiah himself Reference the law of Moses in order to explain righteousness. This is why this is why people don't take the debate. That get out here and headhunt men. And try to gain a following, but you ain't willing to get your boast tested. Let's keep going. Here's another one. First Corinthians chapter seven. Starting at verse 25, all of this. Is meant to direct you back to gain understanding because. There's far more context. This is just. Paul hitting some brief points, but Paul by no means was a custodian of the law or doggone wrote law. Now concerning the betroth, I have no commands from the Lord, but I give my judgments as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Okay. I think that in view of the present distress, it is good for a person to remain as he is. You got to understand. Paul wasn't married. Messiah wasn't married. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles. And I would spare you that. And you got to look at the beginning. The beginning of the book. First five books. How much marriage is taught in there? Paul, Paul is not even really scratching the surface and he dang sure ain't writing law. This is why people, this is why Geno Jennings didn't take that debate. And you have to realize that presumptuous spirit in young men that's raising up, boasting up, arrogant and prideful. Man, when you call out another man don't walk around thinking that you won't get your doggone card pulled. And a lot of this spirit comes from men in the city. Because you don't have grit. The only grit or masculinity you can express comes out of your mouth. You don't have the fruit to back it up. And YouTube dang sure ain't it. 
Man, the difference in understanding and under in application, man, you have plenty of men that can do math on paper. And they like they like to show themselves as scholars. But when it comes to application, being a doer of the word, being able to produce fruit, you can't do it. For instance, tape measure, speed square. I'm just giving you some examples. People say, what's building got to do with it? No, it's application of the knowledge you have. It's how through taking that math that was on paper and producing fruit with tools. A lot of this, this is why I say, men, you got to come out from among them, come out from among these soft and effeminate men. A lot of the problem that a lot of these men just posting these videos coming out of nowhere. The main problem is, man, you got a you got an effeminate spirit on you and you hate the masculinity. That's what it is. Man, you look at a you look at a man's hand and you can tell he's been laboring. And because your hand's soft as butter, you got some hatred in your heart. You got some jealousy in your heart. That's what it is. Because as a man, you struggle to even keep one woman. You hate on a man. You're coveting after. To the point where when you get your card pulled, you tuck tail. You tuck what you call a Johnson. You tuck it into a mangina between your legs. Let's keep going. Iron sharpens iron. Man, that's not without sparks flying. Most men have never worked uh, a piece of metal. Seen iron sparks fly. That's a part of the process. Some men, when well, they get on this internet and they be trying to avoid it. You just out here by yourself. Y'all forbid you got a woman that thinks you're a protector and your boast ain't never been tested. And you just faking the funk. That woman don't, don't, don't know she's laying next to a coward. Man, one thing about that effeminate spirit in a man is a spirit of starting confusion and gossip and then trying to act like you're trying to help with the solution. Spreading all this nonsense. And then coming back and say, hey, y'all, y'all guys cut it out. There ain't no need to debate and, and, and to fight about this. That's a spirit behind an effeminate man. And then to hide your hand like you ain't a part of it. Also, acting courageous and bold. Then making excuses and cowarding out. That's the that's the same thing Geno Jennings did. Telling you all that air punching looked good. Sounded good when he was when he was talking about I debate anybody. He was like, yeah, okay, he's standing for that. Until somebody said, hey, I'll pull a ticket for that. And then what happens? You have all of these fruitless men flood the internet. Video after video, hour after hour, six, seven, you know, five hour videos. Only thing on your doggone resume towards masculinity is YouTube. That ain't going to help you. It's not going to help you. The word says, man, the righteous are bold as lions. Man, that's the difference, man. You got to prove yourself. Rather than just hating on the masculinity of another man. Rather than being young and humbling yourself and saying, hey, 
I want some of what you got. Just that just that fight in you, man. I wasn't raised like that. Man, we live in this generation of men walking around with manicured eyebrows, clear nail polish on, going to get facials, and you talking about you a you a sigma male, alpha male. Man, that word says prove all things. Hold fast to which is good. A lot of you men don't want your spirit tested. Man, I don't, I don't even know how a woman can stand beside a man that sits up there and calls out other men and then you tuck that Johnson you got between your legs and act like you didn't do it. I feel bad. A lot of a lot of you men don't even have kids old enough to prove some of these lessons to. You don't even have a woman to lead. Like I said, can't lead yourself out of a bowl of jello. But the wicked flee when no one pursues. Somebody taking you up for a debate. Is them not wishing no harm or violence upon you? That's an opportunity for, hey, you said you're a man. You said you stand for this. This what you believe? Hey, let's put it to the test. Let's put it to the test. Let's prove that. And then here's the, when I said shout out to Ron Young and, and Pastor Roberts, at least those brothers was, was willing to get in there. They wasn't just punching the air. They stood in the ring and caught all of it. You win some, you lose some. But a lot of you brothers, especially you young brothers, the only doggone fight you got in your life is fight night and call of duty. And you playing that on easy mode. You running from lawnmowers. You running from screwdrivers. You running from, from hammers. You running from, from carrying your groceries in the house? Don't sit up and fake the funk, man. There's always somebody that can pull your car. Man, I, I tell you all the time, man, I am decent in a lot of things. I'm an expert in nothing because I give myself room to be humbled and to grow. I'm decent in a lot of things. That allows for my iron to be sharpened. On this walk. Man, the only man that didn't need his iron sharpened, that came perfect, was Messiah. Everybody else, you better get in line. You have people that sit up and, and, and challenge other people, call people out, don't want to take that bait, want to be counted as righteous, and they sit up there and warp the minds of people. And you sitting up there trying to save face for your doggone followers when they don't even belong to you. Especially not when you out here with that presumptuous spirit. You think they belong to you and that's the reason why you don't take the debate. Man, at the end of a debate, man, there is a, there is a humbling there's a humbling experience. Anytime you've had to provide fact for fact based upon the book. Shout out to Zion Lex. Shout out to Zion Lex. That brother's a test, a test, a testament of that. At the end of a debate, there's a win, there's a loss, there's a draw. But at least your brother was able to get in there and, and stand for what they believe, fight for it. There's some debates that's not even worth taking in righteousness. I'm not about to debate no heathen about what is a man and what is a woman. We let the politicians and the heathen do that crap. When I look at my mama, that's a woman. I look at my daddy, that's a man. How the most high y'all created them. So there's some debates that we don't even need to have, but I'm not calling nobody out and then running and take tail and then spending four, five, six, seven hours. You got 12 hours of, of, of video footage. You ain't yet to answer. 
kind of world you living in? War has been a part of our history. We look at the Maccabean period. War has been a part of history. And the Most High, y'all, hey, he, he ordained a lot of it. A lot of y'all want to have a mindset of Abraham, but yet you don't want to you don't want to defend nobody's honor. You don't want to defend the truth of the Most High, y'all. Man, I'm here today to tell you that as men, you need to strive to gain leadership experience. Man, I don't care if you are volunteering at the girls and boys club around other young men to want you need to try to have some sort of leadership experience. You have men that truly can lead boots on the ground. And all you doing is trying to lead behind a keyboard. You ain't leading nothing. No matter how many YouTube channels you got. We put a little bit of pressure to that. You're going to realize weaknesses will be exposed as they are supposed to. So you can be strengthened. You got brothers talking like they hard and steel. And they ain't been forged in fire. That's the difference between. A, 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 a soft piece of metal versus a hard piece of metal. It's got to go through a process. It's certain impurities that's got to be removed. You find out that a lot of these men that are flooding the internet with these videos, man, they don't, they don't, they don't care to defend truth, not truth that's in the book. You just want people to agree with your feelings about what you think you know. But when it's time to put that to the test, crickets, 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 crickets. See, the problem with this generation of social media uh, subject matter experts, everyone wants to be a SME, subject matter expert, while never being embarrassed. They want to talk bold behind that camera, that red light, come on, you get to going crazy. And in your, in your own life, you never had your card pulled. Never had it pulled. But I want to ask you, what's more important? The followers that you have in possibly leading them astray or the truth of the Most High Yah being delivered? How is that truth going to be delivered if we're told to fight the good fight, told that the Most High Yah is a, is a God of war, but you ain't no warrior, but yet you got the truth? There ain't nowhere in the whole of the book an effeminate man was counted as righteous. Man, I'm going to give you some examples that often offends people. Man, probably about a good 14 years back, man, I was teaching uh, mixed martial arts army combatives for about a period of two years in Virginia, Fort Eustis, Virginia. And people would come through their class after class, huffing and puffing, jokers saying they know something. But in order to be a combatives instructor, when you go to level two, man, there's a part of that where you get humble. You get your card pulled. Man, they take a ring of 12 people and they take one person out of that 12 and put you in the center of it, put you in the guard. You're in there on your back led spread. And for two minutes, man, they're going to let everybody have their turn at you. Some people last more than ever, last longer than others. Some people only make it a minute in there. But that's an opportunity for you to get your dog on boast tested. I've seen people talking about, man, this ain't nothing. This is this is easy. 
Jokers don't know me. I'm from Chicago. I'm from this. Man, they, they don't make it a minute and 30 seconds in there. Man, we used to have people walk into our dojo that would just come spectate, start talking crazy. Soldiers. I say, everybody take a seat. Or the, the head instructor say, everybody take a seat. Let's prove that. People walk in and say, hey, this stuff is fake. Guys are here teaching that fake stuff. All right, let's prove it. That's been a part of history for a long time. Man, I used to see, it sucks, man, because I used to see as a drill sergeant. Man, I used to see men that would say, man, I ain't afraid of nothing. A lot of these men didn't have no fight in them. Find out they was afraid of height. And it's not like it's not like there wasn't help there for them. Get to the top of that rappel tower. You start shaking like a stripper. Thought you weren't scared of nothing. Man, life is full of experiences that as a man. You should be uh, embracing. You shouldn't be freaking scared to go through. Get up there and joke away 30, 45 minutes when it take it only take two minutes to get down the wall. Get up there making excuses. And then and then when you get exposed. Your, your excuses and, and, and gaslighting is real. Man, there's times where. Even being somebody that's decently trained, man, I would get humble. Wrestling some of these young kids that's been wrestling since they was uh, young. Some of them, some of them uh, ranked athletes coming there and fold me up, but I ain't never make the mistake of calling none of these jokers out, being prideful and arrogant, because I knew you can get your card pulled. Man, I've seen... Let me give you let me give an example because a lot of men want to walk around as warriors, but they don't want to they don't want they don't want to defend nothing. If your woman only knew you wasn't built like that. And, and here's the problem. A lot of you ain't trying to be built like that. Man, a major problem is a lot of the last generation created this comfortable environment for a lot of young men and you got to avoid the experiences of grit that made you hard and steel and you have adopted this way of the only way of of proving your masculinity is vain being on this internet I'm telling you man my my, my last deployment Man, I deployed with a whole bunch of guys. Me being a signal soldier working in uh, communication, cybersecurity. You know, being in charge of 30, 40 people. We get to Afghanistan. It's time to fly around. People hearing about these uh, planes being shot at. I'm saying, hey, we got parts that need to go over to the next doggone fob or wherever. All of a sudden, everybody got diarrhea. I said, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. I'll be the first one to go. Matter of fact, I'll go with you. Rule that spirit out. Some people, man, they get so sick to the stomach with having to defend themselves to actually fight for something. We just send them back. You ain't built for it. You got to understand, man, how we pulled out of Afghanistan. And what this next generation of men is in for if they don't get hardened. You got to understand, man, we fought we fought uh, an army that was. Didn't have as much technology. Didn't have the gear we had. It's 20 degrees, man, they out there in them dresses and sandals with AKs. Putting up a fight. Ain't nobody complaining that they cold. Ain't nobody complaining about the conditions. 
man, as a drill sergeant, man, we 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 get taught to check that spirit in young men and young women. Start asking, hey, you cold? Just to see what a trainee will say. Because that spirit, if one person says they cold, it's going to spread like a wildfire. And all that is for the purpose of, of harding them. Transformation of their mind to show you, hey, we got to put you through the gauntlet. Man, men, you need to examine yourself. And if you're one of these men that is not where you need to be, man, you can get right. But you're not going to shame and call out hardened men and think that they won't answer back. You got to look at it. This world is promoting a presumptuous spirit. You got to look at Mike Tyson's career. And you got to look at somebody like Jake Paul. Mike Tyson has proven himself to be a fundamentally sound boxer. You know, the fullest extent of Jake Paul is maybe a couple years worth of boxing training. Didn't go through the same, didn't go through the same experience, the same gauntlet. And it's a, it's a doggone shame. For you to be a young ox, a young bull, and take advantage of trying to call out men who you think can't defend themselves. You find out the hard way. Man, Pastor Geno Jennings tucked tail and ran. And people, people sit up and still follow him after he did it to himself. He did it to himself trying to expose other people and mess around and exploit it himself. Why? Because on the topic of biblical marriage and divorce, they read this because they still got this Christian mindset. You sitting up reading stuff that's not law, stuff that's not Torah. And then you realize somebody, somebody else behind the scenes say, hey, no, 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 you got that wrong. And then rather than addressing the matter like a man, like you got a pair, Going through the process and at the end of that, being able to shake hands and say, hey, at least you took the challenge. There's a lot of mutual respect that comes from just taking a challenge. Call somebody out and then take taking a challenge, but calling somebody out and running. Hmm. Hmm. One of us is not like the other. Man. There's a process or something fathers will go through with sons when at some point uh, a boy will be presumptuous towards his father. Start sizing him up. Yeah, he ain't got it. He's getting old. Got to find out the hard way. Find out the hard way. Get put in your place. But it's, it's, a, it's a very fundamental lesson that a lot of men you haven't had the privilege to go through. And then the embarrassing part is you got to go through it later in life when you got a woman, when you got a kids. Now she's sitting up there thinking she had a doggone. Thinking she had a warrior only to find out you got a mangina. And the only way to get rid of that mangina is to go through the gauntlet. You got to think, man, that th this world promotes, Western culture promotes men having an effeminate spirit. And if a lot of you men got lined up to test that boast, you wouldn't make it. Wouldn't make it at all. You get weeded out real quick. Man, I used to, you know, prior to moving where I'm at now. Man, I did recruiting for about a year and a half. And I used to see people come in and say, hey, man, I want to be a ranger. I'm ready to join. I want to be special forces. And you have the option to do that off the street. But out of about 
19 or 20 people that I saw come in and say they wanted to join. When it came time for the today to ship out and go to training, you might get one that shows up. You might get one out of these men. Talk a good game. Talk a real good game. Sit here and tell you about their background, some of the stuff they done done. And come in and expose themselves. Waste of time. Man, I used to have men walk in and say, hey, I want to join. I want to earn some college money. Man, I want I want that salary. I want I want this. I want all the benefits. We, we do all this paperwork. All this paperwork. Start showing you your options, take you through testing, showing you your jobs that you qualify for. And then you expose what's really in your heart. Hey, I want to do this, but I don't want to go to war. What? Get out of my, man, I used to kick people out of the office. I'm like, we didn't done all this. And uh, you only you want to look like a warrior. You want the honor of a warrior, but you don't want to go through the experience of a warrior. Get out of my office. I'm telling you, you men that run from being sharpened. You 20 some years old and you think you got it. Let's put that to the test. At least there'll be some honor in it. At least there'll be some honor. At least you could get humbled and say, hey, you know what? Next time, man, I may look at a man's fruit and not underestimate the capabilities based upon uh, what you see on YouTube. You got to think, man, as... I'm not calling out even somebody that's been doing this for 17 plus years. I'm not calling out uh, people that I know. It, it makes no sense. You got people two, three years, maybe five years out of Christianity. And all of a sudden you think you 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 at all understanding. And you get humble. By people that's been keeping the Torah. People that know the law. And have been walking upright longer than you. But just because you got a little YouTube fruit, just a little bit of YouTube fruit, some grapes, some raisins. Man, don't mess around. And get your boats tested. Because I'm telling you, when that when somebody answers, answers the call out, answers the slander, answer the allegations and the charges. Go see what kind of man are you? Either you came willing to lay it all on the line to be a real living sacrifice. Or either you trying to live your best life. Off of views and Internet fame. Man, there is there's a part of manhood where you have to learn the basics. There's an appreciation for the basics. Man, the basics have never failed anybody. Man, back when I was personal training, when I was in Germany, man, people would come not knowing anything about uh, fitness or anything. And they would want all these uh, fancy exercises. And try to argue when they don't have no fruit. Man, you you came to get help because you realized you was deficient in an area. Some people you can't help. Some men you can't help. Wonder why. Hey, how come we're, we're, we're learning uh, the bench press first? How come we're learning the squat first? How come we can't do this exercise that's only been around for two years? And them basics been around a long time. This is how people... They people jump in. This is the problem. People jump in 
to the last three fourths of the book. It's not even it don't even make up that much thinking they have an understanding when Paul is telling you, man, I'm speaking to them that know the law. Messiah, man, I, 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 I come in the volume of the book. Man, the best thing you can do when you're outmatched and outgunned is be willing to lose your life for it, especially when it pertains to righteousness, because you, you that's what you're called to be, a, a, a living sacrifice. Or when it when it's when it's in righteousness, hey, man, I apologize. I shouldn't have said that about it. I realized, man, yo, y'all, I realized your train, yo, your fruit was a lot more than what I realized. As a man, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Geno Jennings has yet to do that. Still calling out the lost. There ain't nothing formal, nothing formal or or or, or professional about any debate that he's done. And you go back and you look up, just go back and look at. Pastor Dow versus Ron Young, Pastor Dow versus Pastor Robert. A moderator is you young men's worst nightmare. And this a lot of this online stuff. Where ain't nobody, uh, nobody in there neutral and y'all call that ain't no doggone debate. Ain't no doggone. You still behind that screen can say whatever you want and not have to answer for it. And then and then get off and make all these videos. Man, I'm telling you, a lot, a lot of you, you need to be hardened. You ain't never had to, to glove up righteously. Been bumping them gums. Got the spirit of a woman on you. Man, you don't learn about absolute or the pinnacle of leadership until you've been walking in righteous righteousness. And that has to be physical. Just responding to people's comments because you got 100,000, 500, some thousand followers saying, bless you, brother. Man, that ain't leadership. That ain't the same as somebody calling you up, knocking on your door, asking for guidance, bringing that emergency situation to you right on your doggone front doorstep. That ain't the same. That ain't the same. Talking about deliverance online versus bringing somebody deliverance, that's two different things. A lot of y'all young men are fighting stuff in the book because you haven't spent time being taught and being learned and letting the ruach unlock your understanding. And here's the here's the bad here's the bad part. You got men like Geno Jennings been doing this for a long time. And and doing all that air punching and when you got the opportunity to punch back after you said you would debate anybody you got the opportunity to actually take a swing with truth you choose not to do it man how can you call yourself a man how could you live with yourself knowing that you could have been counted wise if you didn't even open up your mouth everybody everybody is not built for exposing weaknesses. When that word talks about exposing them, man, don't jump on the bandwagon and be a groupie and you think you built for that. You got, let me give you an example, man. There's a difference between uh, a man that's trained versus a man that thinks he's trained. A man that thinks he's trained will go buy a gun, tuck it in a drawer, and when you need to pull it out, you being shot your damn self. Because you don't know what the heck you doing. And you walking around thinking you got it. Versus somebody that's in spent time getting rebuked, getting taught, learning the fundamentals, and being able to actually acquire a target. 
at a standstill and moving. A lot of you men with this effeminate spirit that's calling other men out, man, you are you are uh, uh, sitting ducks. And I hope I hope men that know what I'm talking about have mercy on you. You're not worth the time. But because you think you got a little YouTube page, a couple hundred thousand followers, you think that, hey, you, you, you won some, but your, your boats didn't really get tested. You think just because you doggone can cook a pack of chicken legs on the grill that you qualified to run a, a barbecue business? You don't have no business management skills. You got to be able to train somebody to run the register. To be able to man the potato salad. You let these, you let these followers gas you up. Goes to your head. Man, I came, I came in, I came into this thing. That's the reason when, when my time is up, I got, I got like two and a half years left. Man, I'm out. I'm handing it over to the next generation. I came into a different time. Two soldiers had a dispute. Hey, y'all gonna, y'all gonna duke it out. That's 17 some years ago. Y'all gonna handle it. If not, keep your mouth shut. Man, I got, I got brothers today that I still might disagree with, but at least I know they willing to put up a fight and that ain't lip service because we've been tested, tried, put through the fire. A lot of men avoid that. You avoid it in your, in your, in your, in your, your personal life, your professional life, your spiritual life. You got to think some of these men ain't no different than a lot of these men posting all these videos. You got men out here won't labor to sow one seed out of a pack of seeds, but yet you sit around town telling people to, hey, $100 seed, $500, sow a seed in my, my ministry. What? All men ain't built the same. Just because you got uh, two doggone balls and a Johnson, don't think you can, you can get out there and rumble unless you really ready. Unless you really ready. Man, I tell you, pray for some of these brothers out here, man, that they can be taught, that they can get their iron sharpened, that they can humble themselves. I pray for them, man, because a lot of them have a lot of them have potential, but they just don't move in it, man. And the, and the older you get, it's like. If you don't ever humble yourself and get humbled early on, it's almost like a lost cause for a lot of these older men. Ain't nothing wrong. Uh, an old man can learn something from a young man. A young man can learn something from an old man. I mean, there's sometimes where I, I ask people, I see people on a, I'm struggling to use a speed square and I see somebody building a house, pull over and ask, hey, how do you do that? Look, dealing with somebody 22 years old. That's been doing carpentry for four years. Ain't nothing wrong with that. To let that young man sharpen my iron. And I don't take the information that they gave me and then run with it arrogantly and start calling people out. No. A lot of y'all move like that. A lot of y'all move like that. You're, you're, you're leaders of no one. And, and, and Messiah warned people about men like you. Wasn't qualified. Not saying that you you can't be qualified in the near future, but you just ain't there yet. Man, I have I have I've had several people throughout my career, several men, whatever position I'm in. Whether I'm a team leader with, with 10, 15 people, a squad leader, a platoon sign, a first sign, a drill sign, people sit up and say, Oh, I could do that. I'm wise enough now. You come in front of my office, waste my time talking about you can do my job. That looks easy. Come on, take a seat. Dry this thing. I'm going to sit back and run errands while you while you try to hold it together. And it, 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 it generally don't take but about 30 minutes before they be calling. I take it back. I apologize. Had no idea what this it from appearance. It looked very easy. He ain't doing nothing but bobbing and weaving and ducking. Well, get in here and see if it's that easy. Get in here and see if it's that easy. Some, sometimes people will be a fool to follow you in your ignorance. 
man, I was in a aviation brigade where they had uh, Chinooks, Apaches, and Blackhawks. And I sit up and saw this, this guy sit up and say, hey, flying a plane can't be that hard. You ain't got no training. It ain't nothing but a little drag versus lift and rotate. Ain't nobody letting you, what? Rather than just going through the process of saying, okay, let me give these people credit for the fruit that they're able to produce, knowing that you can't produce it. No, you don't want to do that. you rather shame and throw shots. A lot of you men going to get your card pulled. A lot of you men, you know, we could see by how much time you spend on this thing that you ain't even worthy of getting your card pulled. And you see, you'll just keep on going and making videos and doing this, never to actually have what you stand for tested. And yet people will blind, blindly follow you. A lot of y'all don't realize because you don't want to be sharpened, you the main one scattering your sheep. Don't matter whether you or somebody deems yourself Israel, somebody that deems yourself a Christian, it don't matter. You're the one scattering your sheep. With this internet following and you leading people, you got to think, this same debate with Ringo T has got the same fundamental thing that Geno Jennings ran from. Because that man said, after I heard that man say, man, I, I, I preach the Sabbath, I teach the Sabbath, but I don't teach people. I say, that's, that's it right there. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Because you don't have no evidence of righteousness. Your only evidence of righteousness is bumping your gums. You don't have any experience. You got to think, a lot of you men want the position of, of leading people on the internet, but you ain't sharpened nobody in the physical realm. Nobody. Barely can doggone lead that woman you got. Man, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up, man. Make sure you share this good conversation for men and where you are today as a man. Doesn't mean that you have to be there tomorrow. But you will do better as a man for the things that you don't understand, for the things that are too complex for you. You know, probably because you don't have any experience, you would do better saying, hey, I disagree with that. But there is some things that I can learn from. And then maybe you will have understand. Maybe the most high y'all will unlock your understanding. But brother, just simply thinking, because you got one, two, three, four, five YouTube channels, an Instagram, a Facebook, all of that is 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 real fruit. Mm. <laughs> Time out. Time out. Man, I pray for this, this next generation of men because I want you to think, especially in Western culture, man, other countries are looking at how soft, how soft and effeminate men are. And I'm telling you, a lot of you, when it comes for an eye for an eye, two for a tooth, some of these charges you levying, Man, if you had to do the time behind some of these charges, guess what? You, you would get bent over. You'd be in there with a Kool-Aid packet, putting lipstick on. Because you ain't willing to fight for nothing. The fullest extent of your fight, like I said, is being on the internet, that little red record light, and call of duty. Man, share this video. Get this out. It's definitely a, a, a very uh, abrasive conversation. Let me get to the comments, man. Even if you don't even disagree, there's a mutual respect that has to be had amongst men or it's all out war. And hiding behind this Internet is not a way to avoid that. Shabbat Shalom. Noah Joshua. Nathaniel Nelson. McCoy White. Maurice Delva. Let's see what we got. Shep Dow. Akai M Manolo, apologize if I mispronounced that. John Charlemagne, hey, shout out to all you brothers. Hey, walk strong, walk strong, stay hard. 
stay hard, get hard, hey, embrace the suck of the duty, responsibility, and obligation that the Most High Yah ordained for you as a man. Some men try to avoid it, but that's what separates you. Hey, Justin Rocker, Justin Rocker, you go back to my uh, other videos, you see my you see, I'm in my uniform doing my, my normal get up, but uh, it's Justin Rock on Facebook. Uh, the logo is me blowing a shofar. So you want to reach out? Hey, reach out. Feel free. Even if we disagree, man, there's a there's a mutual respect that has to be had between men. And when that is not had, man, it's all out war. There's nothing no man can do about it. But I appreciate you for tuning in. And even in this episode, talking about this topic, men willing to, 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 to fight for truth and debate for truth, you can't run from that and say, oh, oh, it's a bunch of foolishness. No, no, this has been fighting for truth has been happening since the beginning of time. So everybody's not walking around believing lies. Man, close to the y'all ministry, kicking that thing, gun barrel straight.